David, come on up. Please come on up, everybody. All right. Good evening. I'm Kim Ogg, Harris County District Attorney. I want to thank the members of the jury who today convicted Antonio Armstrong Jr. of capital murder. I have a lot to say about how this case came about, but none of it can be said without thanking the members of the team who spent days and nights and weekends on behalf of Antonio Sr. and Dawn in trying to speak for those who no longer had a voice to defend themselves or say what happened, and yet our job is to find justice for them. And so I want to thank our prosecutors, Ryan Trask and John Jordan. I want to thank Sheriff Rand Henderson for supporting us with the assistance of one of the preeminent experts in uh, blood and crime scene recreation in America. And she spent the same days, nights, and weekends here for the people of our county to achieve justice for Antonio and for Dawn. And I want to thank the Houston Police Department, and Chief Finner, for their dedication to justice. It's no small thing to have a homicide detective on a case like this that has been in trial for literally weeks over the course of three different trials. And I want to say this on behalf of the victims. Antonio Sr. and Dawn Armstrong died because they were trying to be good parents, because they wanted their children to do right, not to lie to work, to be law-abiding, contributing adults. And for that, they paid with their lives. And so today, we've now seen what a murderer looks like. It can be anyone, and the fact that it was their own son is some, it's a trauma it is a tragedy for the whole family. And so I just want to tell you all that but for the absolute labor of public servants who are prosecutors and police, this case couldn't have been brought to justice. And for the jurors who came down and answered their jury, their jury summons, about one in nine people does that. Thank them. Because we don't make these decisions about guilt or innocence unilaterally. Our jurisprudence and our American democracy and our government system doesn't, doesn't contemplate it that way. We participate in our democracy and the community through those jurors, 12 trial jurors and three alternates. The community spoke today. The community found Antonio Armstrong Jr. guilty and the community found justice for our victims. Thank you, prosecutors. Thank you, law enforcement officers. And thank you, jurors. John? Ryan and I just had the opportunity to talk to the 12 jurors and the three alternates. All 15 were confident and very confident in their verdict. So. Antonio Armstrong Jr. walked into this courthouse this morning as a defendant, and now he is a convicted capital murderer. This has, has taken a long time, and I think there has been a false narrative out in our community through um, an effort to shape a narrative that just wasn't true. This jury got all of the evidence, and they, I believe, are confident as we have always been. Um, you know, the, the question has been, because Kim had asked Ryan and I, should you try him again? And our answer was yes, because we believed he killed his parents and he killed two people. So what 
better reason to try him again. And the fact that he was youthful makes him even that more dangerous. Um, and it has been a privilege for me to try this with Ryan. Um, you know, I'm old and Ryan is young and I see a lot of myself in him and he's over the last year has become a close, close friend an amazing trial lawyer and y'all saw that yesterday. And um, we did this together. 50% um, 50% did everything. Elizabeth Oliver is in the back, our paralegal, that probably did more than all of us. Um, but we really want to thank you. Um, and if y'all have any questions for us, Ryan and I can, can answer them. I think that <clears throat> the jury was very confident in their decision um, without the blood evidence. They relayed that to us, that that was something that came after the fact, but they had already made up their minds based on the evidence that they had. Uh, we can tell you that they had made charts in the jury room. They had relayed on evidence such as the test fire in the defendant's um, bedroom, the fire that was lit on the floor, the 911 call, the inconsistencies in the defendant's statement, and also the manipulation of the crime scene were all things that we saw. They, Courtney, what they said was they understood that their job was to look at the facts and not to be overwhelmed by the emotion of the case. Um, and, and in fact, um, they said they didn't consider what the ultimate outcome was gonna be as far as the sentence. Um, so we believe that they did their job and they thought, I believe the, the evidence was overwhelming. And like Ryan said, they said they got to all that just like we asked them in opening as well as in closing. And they said, they all raised their hands, do we even need to discuss the blood evidence? And they, they were confident in the guilt already from the statement, the nominal one, the crime scene, and, and all of the lies. Right. It is hypothetical, but had there been another hung jury, would you have tried this case again? Joel, there was not going to be another hung jury. <laughs> we were confident the. There is precedent in this courthouse. Demetrius Sims, a capital murder of a four in the early 1990s four different times for capital murder. There were three hung juries and a final jury that found him guilty and sentenced him to death. I was part of that trial team, so I had experienced another district attorney making the decision to retry the same defendant repeatedly. What I relied on as the district attorney was the judgment and the expertise of our assistant district attorneys. This job is all about judgment and character. And so when they felt that they had the evidence, we reviewed it together, I made the determination that they should try it again. Would we have tried it? But I can tell you with this jury's affirmation, um, I feel confident that the case will hold up under appeal, but of course should it not, and we've been in this position before, then yes, we would defend this verdict by trying it again. It was very emotional for us. Um, John and I have, have been in a lot of trials, and we've always had family there to support us um, and to lean on on our side and I think it was noticeable in the courtroom and I think it was noticeable to the jury as well but we always felt that Don and Antonio would have been on our side and so that helped us push through uh, and get through these trials. I want to add something if, if I can add something to that. Um, and I agree, I, I, it's still um, overwhelming to give Don and Antonio Sr. a voice um, but there was somebody else we were in the courtroom defending, and that's Josh Armstrong. And we passionately believe that it was inexcusable to drag his name through this courtroom 
in order to get this guilty defendant off. And, and we felt was holding but make no mistake of it, our heart goes out to the family. We understand they're going through a rot. Their truth is not the truth, but our heart goes out to them because they are victims um, of this tragic, um, this, this, by this defendant, um, regardless. So we, we feel heart felt for them. I believe he is with the family. Um, we were never going to use him to convict his brother. Um, his mental health is of the utmost importance, and we believe we present, um, and I hope he's doing well. This time around, you all brought in the defendant because he was doing the end of that. Do you um, in fact, they told us, they said the stairs, what happened was, is when we went to the home and we went like four or five times, we realized how small that home was and how small that staircase was and we couldn't bring the jury to the, to the crime scene. And so we had asked Shelly Rossi, who's one of the 200 reconstructionists in America, to help us bring the home to the courtroom. And so there was a design for that. Um, so the, the stairs were for that reason, as well as the bed to show how he did it. And the jury told us that was very effective to them. Um, and so um, we we're very glad we did it. And that was a thing we did differently on this trial than we did the last. Can you just comment on the federal civil lawsuit that filed when uh, we, we, <laughs> you know, we do get sued. And so we have no comment on a civil suit for damages against anyone. I think our job is to seek justice in the criminal forum, and we did that, and our part for now is concluded. But claiming that 18 passes of blood, you know, that's not enough for you, right? Let me say this. We have seen this case tried by the defense in the media from 2020 to extrajudicial statements made uh, to the press throughout all of these trials. We try our cases at the Harris County DA's office in a courtroom, and that's what we did. Um, as far as the advancements in technology go, um, specifically with the phone, I'm guessing, uh, Nathan Gates as the years went on, we were able to do more with cell phones. We used Cellbrite software and a, uh, to enable us to obtain more information. So one of the things we didn't have previously that we had uh, this time, and we had it back in 2022 too, uh, I just think we used it more effectively this time, was the fact that we could show that the defendant's phone was turning on and off during the time that his parents uh, were killed and so that was very important to us and we could also show that his phone was being unplugged right before a minute actually before we know the killer went uh, triggered the downstairs or the second floor motion detector so that did become very important to us and as far as uh, the blood goes uh, Chelly Rossi really helped explain that to us we learned from her um, and what we found out uh, through talking with her is that the blood uh, was expiration blood from Antonio senior um, and that was supported by the medical examiner's testimony. It was supported by um, the EMT, and it was supported by the crime scene photographs. And we fully believe that that was uh, the result, that that was actually what happened, uh, and that was what was on the back of the sticker. Can you talk about just the money and the resources that go into trying a defendant over seven years? I mean, yeah. and, and, and how big of a priority is it? Well, murder is our highest priority, and I think our society and Houstonians would confirm that. They want us to work on the most important cases. And when two people are murdered in their bed, in their own home, in their sleep, that is such a nightmare that it demands justice. And so when it comes to application of resources, as the in effect managing partner of the largest public law firm in town, I would 
tell you that it's a tough decision to make because as these lawyers worked on this case, their peers had to step in and work on their other cases, and they would tell you that. So we operate as a team, and when two of our lawyers are working on a case of this difficulty and magnitude over that period of time, it comes out of everybody else's hide, and we're happy to do it. Our lawyers do that regularly. They do it when somebody leaves on a 12-week paid leave of absence. We didn't get new lawyers, even though our lawyers got those benefits. So the work has to get done. And prosecutors and investigators rise to the occasion. I've seen it done in police departments all of my career. Law enforcement pulls together. And in these types of situations, we think it's not just, you know, what we're supposed to do. We think it's our duty. I've been here 24 years. I've been involved in of how can you spend resources and time on a murder case. If any one of us has a, a family member who's been killed, don't you want us to go full throttle and do the best job we can? This is a matter of someone who we believed and a jury just found guilty of walking into his bedroom of his parents and shooting them both dead. If that doesn't require us to, to give us our all and to give a presentation that a jury can, can honor and respect, then I don't know what does. So I don't think we should ever apologize for doing our job when our job result is to get justice for someone who was youthful and killed two people in the middle of the night. Um, and that's from a career prosecutor. Um, and so, and frankly, I think the taxpayers get more value out of me when I'm in trial than when I'm at my desk managing people. So. The allegation by the defense that the police investigation was not done well at the very beginning, do you think there's any um, truth to that? I will tell you that in speaking with the Houston Police Department and other agencies that were involved in this case as well and helped work on it, I think it was clear that there was no evidence that ever took them outside the house. The windows were all locked in the house, the doors were all locked, the defendant turned the alarm system off in order to open the, the door. I do believe that the Houston Police uh, Department did do a thorough job. I think the evidence just led them and always had led them that the killer was inside the house. You're reporting, Courtney? I don't know. Um, it's, the, it's unimaginable. It's unexplainable. But it can happen to anybody. Yes. And, and you know, to your point regarding um, the police officers, you know, those officers got to that home in a dark of night, going through the house not knowing who was there. They were heroes. And Rick DeToto is a very talented lawyer, and he kind of conflated the difference between first responding patrol officers and, and homicide investigators. And so a lot was made, and that's what the narrative was in the community, but the reality is everybody did their job. The officers secured the scene, the investigators did the interview, we got the 911, we, 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 um, we, we got the phone records, we got the alarm records. I mean, at the end of the day, because a, a defense attorney is able to confuse folks on the stand doesn't mean it was a bad job. Um, they got the evidence that clearly was necessary for a jury that was fair to convict. Uh, they told us right off the bat, it was actually one of the first things they told us back there, is they were able to dispatch with the notion that Josh had anything to do with this right away. In the first day or two of the case, they were done, and they knew that Josh didn't have anything to do with this. Did they talk about why it took them so long to comb through all the evidence? I mean, 10 hours? Is that long? I don't know. 
I think they were pretty thorough. Um, and I've never seen this actually, but they had uh, um, flip charts that they had torn off and posted on the wall and the things that they were writing that were important to them. And it was, um, it was refreshing to see all the things that were important to them were the same things that were important to us. And they had basically taken main topics, 911 call, defendant statement, and underneath that were bullet points of all the things that they took away from that. And they kept going with those charts until I got to a point and they said, we know he's guilty here. So uh, we were very pleased to know that they did take a lot of time and they looked at all the evidence in coming to this decision. You know, we always want them to come back very quickly. Um, but you know, we, we, they were with us for over two weeks. So I'm sure they had to talk it out and they had to, to process it and listen to the statement would take an hour. And, and so I'm glad because I'm sure that they didn't take this lightly. And if you're about to sentence someone in his early 20s to a life sentence with your verdict, you better take your time. So I don't think it's inappropriate that they slept the night, came back today and after lunch, we're comfortable with their verdict. Right. Let's close it up. Life in Harris County is priceless. Life is priceless everywhere. I do think it is our duty, and I think it is our moral obligation to seek justice for individuals like this, good people, good parents, law-abiding citizens murdered in their bed. There's no cap that a taxpayer would put on a human life in good conscience. So I'm proud of our police department. I'm proud of the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department for sending us their best. And I am super proud of our entire prosecution team. These two lawyers didn't do it alone. They have DA investigators, they have a paralegal, and they have the respect and support of all of the employees of the Harris County District Attorney's Office. So on behalf of everyone, thank all of you who did the heavy lifting in this case. Thank you all.